Hi, I'm Dr. J and this is a video about R packages. This is a perfect video for those of you who are pretty new to R and have not used any R packages at all yet. And even if you have a little bit, this will give you a sort of a foundation of, of what R packages are and how you can install and load them up into your R session. Uh, as usual, the script for that I'll be using in this video is down below in the description or a link to it is down there. Uh, and so if you would like to follow along as I'm running commands, you should go ahead and download that script uh, and then load it up in your RStudio session and run the commands as I run them. Now, the reason that R packages are so important is that basically all of the functionality in R exists in R packages. And uh, as you get doing more sophisticated statistical analyses, uh, and not even that sophisticated, you will want to be loading different R packages to get access to different functionality. Now, just to get started off, let's run this session info function. As a reminder, you can run the commands using command uh, enter or control enter if you're on a Windows machine. And now I want you to just focus right now on this line right here, attached base packages. Ignore what's below and in fact the loader via namespace for you might look different than it does for me but the attached base packages should all look the same. So when you load up an R session by default you are loading up the stats, graphics, GR devices, utils, datasets, methods, and base packages. So those packages just get loaded automatically as part of what we might call base R. Okay. And when you are running uh, commands, so for instance, here we're going to calculate the mean or the average of these 10 numbers. As a reminder, this is just the uh, vector of numbers, one, two, three, up to 10. And if you run this command right here, um, this is actually from the base package. This function mean is coming from that base package. And how do you know that? Well, one easy way is to look at the help file for mean. And when you look at that help file for mean, which is now right down below here, you can see in the brackets or the curly braces here, right after the name of the function, so the name of the function is mean, and then you can see the curly braces base, that tells you what package that function is coming from. Now sometimes in code, uh, you will see folks, the, the whoever wrote the code, the coder, uh, will explicitly call the function and the package that that function is coming from. So here in line 14 of my code is an example of doing that. So we're still going to use this mean function, but now we're explicitly calling it from the base package. And so we have base colon colon function name in this case mean. And that will run the same code that we had run before. And so now we can start seeing where some of the different uh, functions that we might want to use are coming from in terms of these base packages that are loaded. So R norm is a function to generate random normal random variables, it's standard normal random variables, uh, and it comes from the stats package. So here is a bunch of standard normal random variables. The plot function comes from the graphics package. Uh, there's a plot now down below. Doesn't look great, we can zoom it in, but that's not really the point. The point here is that the, this functionality is coming from these different packages. In a previous video, we talked about uh, data frames and we looked at the data function. Well, that comes from the utils package. This function just tells us a bunch of different data sets that are available for you to play around with in R. The uh, actual data, right, that's shown here, you can see here the data sets in package data sets. Now it could be that we could be looking at different packages, uh, but I didn't do that here. And this particular data set, this air passengers one, is coming from the data sets package. And so if we wanted to take a look at air passengers, we could just look at air passengers or we could explicitly call it from this data sets package. All right, so there's that data set, this air passengers data set. Okay, so, so the idea here is that the different functionality in R exists in different packages. Okay, now, um, not, if you're just getting started in R, it will not take very long and you will immediately want to start installing your own packages. Uh, I don't even know how many packages I have installed. I guess we'll take a look in a second. Um, one of the packages that I use a lot is a package for making graphics that look a bit better uh, than the base R graphics. 
and it comes in a package called ggplot2. Now, the standard way of installing packages is to use this install.packages function. That function takes in a list, character list, or a character vector of package names. In this case, I only have one. I'm just going to load up ggplot2. And if you run this, now uh, ggplot2 is already, no, okay. If you get that in our studio, just say yes, uninstall. Um, for me, that's all the line that I have, right? So it just reinstalled ggplot2 because I already had it installed. For you, if you're just getting started with R, uh, it might have done a lot more. And we'll see an example of that later, I believe. Um, because this ggplot2 package might depend on other packages. And so when you're gonna load, or install rather, when you're going to install the ggplot2 package, you need to install all of the dependencies for that package at the same time so that that package can actually work. And so if you were to run this line 34, uh, you might see it taking a while down here in the console and it, it's loading up, or it's, I keep switching those terms, it keeps installing all of the other packages that are dependencies for ggplot2 and then eventually will install ggplot2. Now, uh, the packages that get installed from this install.packages function are on a network or repository, if you will, of R packages called CRAN, and that stands for the Comprehensive R Archive Network. And it's the most common way of installing packages, but there are others. Um, one of the big ones is Bioconductor. So here is some instructions for Bioconductor. I'll bring them over to this window. Um, so Bioconductor here, in particular, has packages for um, sort of the bioinformatics. This is a, it says right here, open source software for bioinformatics. And the method that you actually use to install bioconductor packages is a bit different. And so you can read down here if you're interested in how to install bioconductor packages. Basically, you just have to run some R code. Um, you know, it's a couple more lines than install that packages, but really not too bad at all. Now, um, I'm very curious, for those of you who are more familiar with packages in R, uh, are there other main repositories that you would suggest, uh, you know, I should have been talking about here in addition to Bioconductor? If there are, you know, feel free to comment down below so that others get the benefit of where you think there are other useful packages. Now, a common thing that's happening these days is that some uh, developers of R packages are putting their packages just on GitHub, uh, or even those that are on CRAN, there are development versions on GitHub, that is development versions of those packages. And so from time to time, you might want to install packages directly from GitHub. Now, uh, that's pretty easy. There's a function here called install underscore GitHub, and it actually exists in the remotes package. So right now, if you try to run uh, this line, you will probably get an error. And you will probably get an error because you uh, don't have the remotes package installed. And this is very common when you first get started in R, where you don't have all the packages that you need that say you're trying to run somebody else's script and this line doesn't work and that line doesn't work. And it's because you're missing the installation of those R packages. So in this case, you would just do install the packages remotes. Uh, if you get this, say, yep, we're going to close other packages while we restart R. Right, and then it installs remotes, and again, for you, it might uh, install a bunch of dependencies as well. But once you do that, now you can install this package directly from uh, GitHub. Now, it didn't work for me. This is sort of an error. Not really an error. This is just saying, look, nothing has changed in this package since I installed it last, so we really don't need to install it. Okay. Um, there are other places that you can install from, and so in this remotes package, if you look at the help file for the remotes package, and you go down to where it says install, right, you can see there's a development package from Bioconductor, Bitbucket, CRAN, uh, Git, GitLab, uh, local, SVN, right, so a variety of ways that you can install packages using this remotes package and the install features that it has. Okay, so now, once you have installed a package onto your computer, you still need to either 
uh, use explicit calls for the functions like I did here, or more commonly what you're going to do is you're going to uh, load up the package in the R session. So here as an example, if you try to run this qplot function, um, it probably will not work. Even though we installed the G, so maybe I should say this, qplot is a function from the ggplot2 package. Um, but, and we installed the ggplot2 package, right? So what gives that we cannot use this function now? And the reason is that the ggplot2 package has not been attached or loaded in your R session. And you can see that if you go to session info here, right, we still only have these packages loaded. Uh, these are not really, I guess, attached is the correct word. These are not attached, so they're not available uh, to you to use directly. And so you have a couple options here. The first option, as we did before with remotes, is that you could call the function qplot explicitly from that ggplot2 package. And that will work. So there's the plot down below. But, you know, if you write all of your code, your scripts, with explicit calls to all the packages, it's going to get um, pretty wordy, right? There's going to be a lot of extra characters there that really aren't needed to understand what the script is trying to do. So a much more common approach is to load up the library or attach the package. So here we've attached the package and now we can just use qplot directly. So there it is. And now if you're running R scripts, what you typically do is, here's a new script, is that you will load all the packages as the first thing that you do in your R script. And that just helps you, if you come back later, or somebody else, if they're trying to use your script, to know what packages are required to run that script. And so this is a very common convention, is to put all the packages loaded up at top. All right, once we've loaded the package, we can actually see that information in session info. So now we have an extra line here, which says other attached packages. These were the base attached packages. And now we have ggplot2 as an attached package. The underscore here then provides you information about the version. So in this case, we have version 3.3.6 installed at the time that I recorded this video. All right, so um, a couple other things you can do here. One is that if you wanted to see what packages you have installed, you can use the library command, but without any packages listed. And so here, uh, this is all the packages that I have installed. Probably if you run this command, you'll see many fewer packages here because if you're getting started with R, you won't have had the opportunity to have been installed too many packages yet, okay? But over time, you will get more and more packages. Um, the second thing that I wanna talk about is how do you know what packages you should use? And so there's a really nice article here that I'll pull over that uh, talks about um, how you should choose packages and the sort of quick Summary is on the left side here, these rules one through 10. And so they basically talk about things like, well, what does the package do, right? What do you need it to do? And therefore, why would you need to install it? Um, but it gets also into, look, anybody can create an R package and anybody can put that package on CRAN. So that doesn't mean that the package does what it says it should do. That doesn't mean that the package is bug free. And so how do you ensure that you're using a high quality package uh, and basically, you know, there's some suggestions here of, you know, how many people have used it. Uh, I think how long it's been uh, established, how long has that package been around. The longer a package has been around, then the most likely the bugs have been found and fixed, and therefore it's safer to use. Right? Find out who developed it. Um, the folks said working at our studio, I think, do a fantastic job of putting packages together. And we're going to talk about one set of those packages here in a second. Right, and so this is um, good for you to make sure that when you're using our packages, you're using sound packages that have been used for a while, developed by people that are trusted, uh, so that you know that you're getting uh, a good quality package. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about uh, is just that, uh, is this idea of the tidyverse. Um, and this is because in all of the future videos that I'm gonna have here, okay, maybe not all of them, but in many of the future videos, I'm going to be using functionality from the Tidyverse package. And it, the Tidyverse package is really just a wrapper around uh, a bunch of other packages. Um, so here I was gonna pull up, it's tidyverse.org, there we go. Um, 
So here are the packages that are part of the tidyverse. So we have dplyr, ggplot2, forecats, tibble, reader, stringer, tidier, and per. Uh, and as this says, tidyverse is an opinionated collection of R packages designed for data science. And the key is that all of these packages share an underlying design philosophy, grammar, and data structures. And so I think it's a really good way, especially if you're just getting started, uh, with using R uh, and making your code very readable, making great plots, um, and this kind of things. And so in future videos, we'll be talking a lot about the tidyverse. And so you may want to right now go and install the tidyverse. Um, when you do this, uh, almost certainly you're going to have a lot more uh, code that runs down here in the console than I had because there are a lot of dependencies for these packages in the tidyverse. Uh, just here, I've already installed the tidyverse and so uh, I've already installed all of the dependencies. All right, so that's sort of a brief introduction to R. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if it was, I'd appreciate that thumbs up. Uh, if you think these kinds of videos will help you get it started using R, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, until the next time, hope you have a good one.